is a big thing for plasterers to want to get faster and it's natural. You know, I've been working on it myself over the past few years. I've been wanting to progress and I've been wanting to get faster myself. And through that, I've learned that a few things have worked massively and I want to share that with you today with this video. Hello, Blaine Gray, Plaster and Beginners. In today's video, I'm going to show you some essential tips and how to get faster at plastering. Now this is obviously a massive subject, there's so many people who are just learning or maybe you're in the trade and you want to start plastering more walls in a day so you can essentially make more money or you're just working at home and you need to build up your output so you can get the big wall in the living room done or the big ceiling. Before I start a mix, before I even start anything, this video is not about me rushing around, throwing the plaster on as fast as I can. I believe that the best way to get better at plastering and getting faster at plastering is by mastering the fundamentals. I don't believe that it's necessarily how fast you can throw it on. Because um, if you've got a plaster on but it looks like the Rocky Mountains, you know, <laughs> you've got a bigger battle after that, trying to get it flat and working it out. So what I want to show you today is not only how to apply your plaster a bit faster, but how to get it in a way that it's ready for the next stage. So what I'm working on is to make sure in today's video, I'm going to show you the essential tips you need to know. So it's not all about being rapid. I want to show you some tips on how to get better at troweling, um, better in terms of even the mixes in plastering. That is so important. That's what I'm going to mention. The first tip is when you're mixing, don't have a really sloppy mix. Some plasterers think, right, we've got a wet mix or we've got a sloppy mix. We're going to get more wrong because we get more time in the plaster. It's not actually the case. What I found is by making a sloppier mix, one, it's harder to put on, it's messier, but with that, it takes longer. It takes longer for you to get your plaster on the wall because it's a sloppier mix. It's harder to, to hold in your hawk, it's harder to put onto your trowel, and generally, the amount you're putting on a wall is going to be limited because it can't hold its own body. So, the perfect mix, what I'm going to start with is make sure your mix in plastering is perfect. So, what I say is 12.5 litres of water to one bag of plaster. That is the perfect mix. It says otherwise on British chips and bags. Don't follow their instructions. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm God, I'm just saying that they say it's like 11 litres or something. It comes out like bonding. Just stay away from their instructions. It's not, it's not amazing. So 12.5 litres of water to one bag of plaster is the perfect mix. And that will give you two things. It'll give you a nice amount of time to work with, but it gives you a bit of body in the plaster. It's not too sloppy, it can hold its own weight and then when you have got it on your hawk and travel, it's easier to take off and therefore easier to apply which means you get the plaster on faster whilst doing it in a way that it's more controlled, it's not all over the floor, you're not stressing because it's all over you, you're not cleaning your hands, you know, I know it sounds stupid but all these things will slow you down. If you're covered in plaster, it's distracting. If your hands get in with plaster because it's sloppy and the mix is all over you, it's distracting. What we need to do is limit them distraction, get the fundamentals out of the way so everything else after is smooth. So I'm going to get the mix on, I'm not going to show you how to mix plaster, it's not for this video. Um, if you do want to learn that, I'll give you some advice at the end on how to do it if you are a beginner. But I'm going to mix some plaster and then I'm going to go through some of the fundamentals and how to start increasing your output and therefore getting pla uh, faster. So yeah, cool. Okay, so the mix is on, got a plaster on the hawk. The first thing I want to talk about is one of the most important things in plastering, is having full control, is having the ability to place the plaster onto your trowel wherever you want it and spread it wherever you want it. So this is something that I believe is probably the most important aspect to speed because if you have the ability to full control over your trowel and have the ability to place the plaster wherever you need it, then everything else after will just fall into place. So it all starts with learning the fundamentals. So the first thing is having the plaster on the hawk and having to take it on two trowels. So a lot of people struggle even just getting the plaster from the hawk to the trowel. So, you know, it's called, this is called splitting, splitting the plaster. It's where you split it in half that way we've still got some on the hawk, but we've still got a very nice amount on the trowel. This is important. You want a nice amount of plaster on your trowel, and that means you can spread it further, and means it'll go further. So, following it up. We've 
you've got nice coverage, it'll go far, and not only that, you're learning to control the plaster and putting it where you need it. So again, I'll split it again. So it's again, splitting the plaster. What we're doing, put it in the middle with Hawk, place it in the middle. I'm gonna show you in slow motion. We're basically bringing the trowel to a V, right? Then at the top, we're pushing the plaster in and then forcing it onto the trowel. Did you see how slow that was? It's not gone anywhere, still on the hawk, it's still on the trowel. And basically, the main thing is practicing that movement, is having the ability to take the plaster from the hawk, put it on the trowel, and placing it exactly where you need it. I know it sounds stupid, it sounds really, really fundamental, but I've found and seen so many plasterers taking the time with getting the plaster onto the trowel in the first place. And you know, it all adds up, it all takes away from the overall experience. So, I think just have a conscious effort to be able to take the plaster from the whole country trowel. And then having it where you need it safe, I need it at the top of the trowel, just taking a little bit as so. And then if we're doing the tops, for example, at least you can run it off. You've got full control of where you need it. So, say, having the ability just to peel it on, on the edges, so you can scoop up have a little sliver as so. Just practice getting the plaster onto your trowel in different ways. So, well, now we're gonna talk about trowel techniques. So, I believe too many people rush and throw the plaster onto the wall. I think that is probably the worst way to put it on because say if you've got lines and ripples all over the place, if the plaster sets or it starts going hard, then all of a sudden you're chasing your tail and you're rushing to get these lines out these lines that shouldn't have been there in the first place, where if you're applying the plaster and flattening it at the same time, and in my opinion that's the best way to go. So, take the plaster, again a decent amount, we're going to start from the bottom. I'm holding the trowel at 90 degree angle, holding that plaster. See, 90 degree, fingers out ready. I'm going to come down, all the way to the bottom, all the way up. Now the top, this is something that is a struggle. We've got a suction it's stuck there on the plaster. The worst thing you want is to come to the top and then forget to swivel. But basically, if you just carry on down, we've got a flat section of wall. I'll do that again, I'll try and explain it a bit better. Take your plaster, apply it. And then the top, come up and then you tilt the plaster. Just tilt it ever so slightly, tilt it 10 degrees. And that allows you to come back and flatten anything you've left behind. So we come up, come back at ourselves, take the lines out, and then come back up. So, come back, back up. Come back, back up. And then what we're doing, and what we're left with, I'll show you, is a very flat section. See how that section now I've got this ripple, but that's what was left behind. Now that is what we're gonna bring out the next floor. So watch this. That ripple is left behind when I apply the plaster. Take the plaster. And then we're starting from that point where the ripple is, starting there. The edge of your trowel is taking that ripple out. We're going to come back over that whole section and come back up. And what we're practicing here is practicing to apply the plaster in a way that whatever happens after this, we're safe. Say if that goes really hard now, right? I know that in, in theory I've only got a little bit of flattening to do. But, you'll probably get away with going straight onto the second coat with that. We don't have to, I'm gonna show you some tools in a minute on how to speed that whole flattening process off, but just make a conscious effort to really get good at troweling in that manner where you're coming up and with the same motion flattening off. So at the top of that movement, coming off, slight tilt, you have a slight tilt of the trowel, which allows the suction not to happen. And you pull away from the plaster and then come back down on yourself. And we're constantly moving and removing the lines that we're making. Okay, if you've seen any of my videos, you know about this tool. This is your speed skim. It's basically a skimming spatula, which goes on nice to my next point, which is using leverage. 
use the tools that are going to make your life easier. This is this Upspeed Skim ST and it's ideal for flattening plaster flat fast. So I've got my first coat on. I'm going to flatten it straight away. Just come across horizontally. Cross again. Cross the other way. And we're also going to come up vertically. And that way it's flat both ways. So I'm coming up. Nice, can go. Okay, so how long did that take? All right, 20 seconds maybe, I'm not sure. But that is that section flattened, okay? Now, the traditional way of plastering is you use one mix to put in the first coat, flatten off, clean your buckets, clean your tools, get another mix on, start again. But the way I've been working on is the way a few way I was originally taught actually is another way is to use the same mix. So instead of doing that, instead of going through that process, we're gonna use the same mix. Now it's getting thicker but we've still got some body in there. It's not too bad. Now this will do two things. It'll get you used to using plaster that's a bit stiffer. And not only that, if you're using the same mix, if you want to get faster, this will force you to speed up because you have a lot less time to apply two coats of plaster. Now, if you really want to get faster at plastering and you really want to get better at this, first off then, you do the first thing is mastering your heart techniques, mastering your trial techniques, mastering your application. And then the way to force yourself to getting faster is by doing this and using the same mix to apply two coats of plaster because it does make you work faster because you know the plaster's going off you haven't got a safety blanket it's a great way to really push yourself but not only that it's actually faster because you're not mixing twice you're not cleaning your tools twice you're not doing you're not doing things two times over I've got one mix and I've not cleaned the tools in between because I'm literally just going to put it right on right now and then that way it's physically faster doing it this way so not only are you getting faster with the plasterer the process is faster so, starting on the corner bead, working up it, work around the bottoms, just get around that, now I'm going to show you the second coat, again quick tip, don't apply as much plaster, it doesn't need it. Especially if you're doing it this way, it doesn't need as much plaster. I've got max one mil here. So I'm going to show you in real time me applying a plaster to this wall in the usual fashion to do it. Okay, so that's it. Second coat applied. I'm not necessarily rushing around, I'm not running around, but taking use of the using a second mix, it's thicker, it's easier to spread at this point at least. And we're just focused on getting the trial techniques right, getting the wall flat as we go, and really honing down and make sure we're getting our techniques bang on. So that's the second coat on. Gonna get the rest of the walls on, I've got a few more to work with, and then we're gonna come back for a few more tips. Okay, so that's the fundamentals behind plastering faster. So you've got the trowel techniques, you've got a perfect mix, and you've got the idea of using a hawk and trowel. What I want to show you now is a clip from one of my other videos. It's basically where I plastered the room in one hit. It was quite intense, but 
you basically have a close-up on me applying the plaster and just focus on me. I'm using the exact same techniques. I'm getting it on, but I'm also flattening it at the same time. So just pay attention to how I get it done. Uh, I also talk about speed and how at that at that moment I really did have to throw it on. But I just thought I'd show you a clip from video where you can see me plaster a fairly big area in one short space. The way I did this was two separate mixes. So I had a mix for the first coat, a second mix for the second coat. Just because of time and big areas, I'd highly recommend you have two separate mixes. Otherwise, one, you'll be mixing frequently because your buckets aren't big enough. And two, it's just about having control. So yeah, check this clip from the video. I'll also leave a link above here and then you get a chance to see the video in full. So there should be a link around here and I'll do it a bit later on. So I highly recommend you watch that video because that is a real test on me pushing myself for speed. But you'll see the full process, application, flattening, smoothing off, reveals, angles, everything. So I watch this clip now. Check it out. Cheers. Okay, so like I've said, I've mixed up the plaster and I've jumped straight on the stilts. The main part with doing a big area, or oh, this again, this isn't necessarily about the area, it's about the fiddly parts to it, but um, the main part is just to get the plaster on the wall or the ceilings. Like I said, I'm going to be starting from the top, starting up, working my way down across the room, um, and I'm going to do it whilst I'm in that area. So I'm starting the left, but top left-hand part of the room, and I'm going to work my way down from the top. So I'm going to start from the left, come all the way round, meet it, at the point where I started and then start come down on myself there's no point um, doing the ceiling first then going back to the walls is I'm already in that position I might as well do the walls right underneath the ceiling and it just saves time it means you're more productive with your time and it just means you're gonna get a lot more done like I said the main part is just to get the plaster on there at this stage don't necessarily worry about how flat it is I'm gonna show you a good technique for getting your walls flat pretty fast but you just want to get it on. The last thing you want is to try and get all the plaster on the wall and then you start falling behind at the first stages. That is the worst case scenario. If you fall behind and the plaster starts to set and you've still got halfway to go, then you're in trouble. So don't necessarily worry about the flatness at this point. It's the first coat of plaster. It's actually the majority of the room done. Well, I've still got a rush, I've still got a lot of plaster, still I've got a lot of play, but you don't want to fall behind at this point, so still gonna fire it on. Just pushing through. Okay, so let's talk about the technique. I'm starting horizontally, starting on the left side. Like I said, I started in the top left hand of the room, followed all the way around, jumped off my stilts. But now half the area is done, over half. It's firing on, but still trying to get the plaster flat. So there's no problems later on. That is a big thing. You want to make sure that, again, you're on top of it. So I've started horizontally, now I'm working vertically. For me, this is the fastest stage of plastering. I get a lot more on when I'm ver vertically applying the plaster because you're getting a bigger sweep upwards in the air. There's the limitations to your horizontals, but with your verticals, I always find you get a bigger area on. So um, that's just my preference. But again, I'm keeping my plaster low to the ground, but I'm just getting it on. I'm not taking my time. And to be honest, with if you are doing a big area, you have got a rush. Um, you can't just be floating around taking your time. You've really got to be in the mindset that you've got to push yourself and you've really got to be pushing yourself further than what you would usually. Um, so as you can see, I'm, I'm just firing it on. I'm not taking my time. I'm just trying to get it on. I'm aware of the back boxes and I'm aware of my internal corners, but at the same time, this isn't the time to, or the place to be thinking about how neat your work's going to be. You've kind of just got to learn to start throwing the plaster on the walls and that comes with time, but... It is something you can learn and take advantage of. Okay, the room's on. Bar two reveals, I ain't got that head on, I ain't got that head on yet. But the room's on, I literally just ran out of plaster. But yeah, the hard bit is getting a plaster on the wall. I'm gonna have a quick clean up, quickly flat with a speed skim, and then get it straight on. So okay, so clean the mix up, clean my tools, got rid of the mix bucket, got rid of the mixer. Now, 
The last thing we're going to talk about is just make sure you get the plaster when it's still relatively wet. And we want to get it as flat as possible from the beginning. And that way that anything after this is going to be minimal, we won't require much time, it won't require much effort. But the big secret is, it's a lot easier to get the plaster flatter at the beginning stages. So we're talking, I've literally just finished packing up the mixer. I'm going to flatten this with a speed skin. So I'm going to run up the speed this time first. Keep it parallel. I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to come across. Now, because that didn't take no time, what I like to do is flatten it immediately after with the trowel. Now, this means I'm still getting the plaster when it's still wet and playable and workable. So, I'm actually stolen in there. Take that out. And this is where I slow down a bit, I like to take my time, I want to get my wall dead flat. So we put it all the way up. Stand at the bottom, all the way up. Keep it a trial close to the wall. What we're doing, we're just getting the plaster flat, but it's still a good time to do it. Now this does one of two things. It, it reduces the amount of stress. If you're trying to flatten plaster and get ripples out when it's really hard and tough, it's really gonna stress you out, number one, but two, it takes a hell of a lot of time and energy. To get the plaster flat when it's hardened up is really, really tough and it will take it out of you and you'll end up spending a lot more time trying to make it right. Whereas if we're doing it straight away, like I said, I've just cleaned up, immediately put the speed skin on and now I'm going to flatten it. We're taking all the stress out of the game, all the stress out of plastering and we're just left after this with a nice, easy task. So, again, trial close to the plaster. Now anything after this is going to be nice and easy. So what we've done today, what we've hopefully, what I've hopefully shown you today is to get the most out of plastering but doing it in a logical way. So learning to use your tools, learning to use the tools around you and use them in, in your plastering to speed things up. But also just doing things a bit more logically, tackling the plaster at different times and looking how we can overall up our game which we then creates and allows us to be better plasters. So again, that wall now, need a few more flattens, but all the work's been done. We've applied the plaster, two coats, flattened it twice, and we've done it with minimal movements. That's how we've been flattened twice, and we've literally only just cleaned up the plaster. Anything after this is going to be nice and easy. So, I hope you've enjoyed the tips today in today's video. I really appreciate you watching. If you did like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel, and yeah, feel free to leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Hit the comments below. Leave something behind, let us lead, hear your feedback. But most of all, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Blame Gray, Plaster Beginners. Cheers.